the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed.
process of their aim to step down to like the verse. Seek the Lord and pray. Let us break out the fire in the house of those that it devour with none punish for that. O you who turn justice into the true order and cast down righteousness to the earth. They hate when the truth is in the gate, and they have poor him who seeks the truth. Therefore, because you are the Lord, and your exact practices are ready from him, you have felt houses of evil sudden. But you shall not run in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how great are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You will put the righteous, who take a bribe, and turn aside the need to the Therefore, he who is true will keep silent in such times, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. As you have said, hate evil and love good. And establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the of those. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will command the angels concerning you. Guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Our epistle comes to Hebrews in the third chapter, beginning at verse 12. Take care, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it's all today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard the end of the devil? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And who was he for for forty years? Was it not those who sinned and whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the base he comes to judge us and living in the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the body. Again and again and again, and 
it's never enough. Never clean enough. You have to do it again the next day. It just gets dirtier. It's just like us. Every time we don't do one of these for maybe a day, maybe we have a really good day. The next day, we have to do it all over again. And it's never enough. If we try to earn our way in, if we like try to keep our house completely clean, pretty much the only way we'd be able to do it is if we took everything in our house and threw it outside and just left stuff in the empty house. Yeah. If we threw it all away, that'd be about the only way we could do it. But even then, it would still be tough. Thankfully, Jesus doesn't leave us here. We're trying to earn our way into heaven. We don't have to deal with this giant checklist of things that we have to do. Because Jesus came through the other day. Okay. Jesus came through and did our checklist for us. By him dying on the cross, your giant checklist of all the things that you need to do to get your way to heaven, he made clean. Isn't that right? Okay, what do you mean by Or not. Okay. So, what I want you guys to remember from today is Jesus has already taken your checklist and he has made it clean. He has made you clean with his death and his resurrection. So we don't have to try and earn our way in. He's already done it for us. Okay, did you pray with me, buddy? We're going to pull our hands and we're going to pray. Did you fold your hands? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your son who has checked off our list of things we have to do to earn our way into heaven. He earned it for us by his death on the cross. And we have salvation through our faith in him. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift and help us share it with the rest of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, please, we go back to your seats.
shows us Jesus, the soil for this man. At the same time, showing us the delirious effects that material things have on our relationship. First, I'd like to focus on verse 21 of this text. It's truly amazing how the Lord he looks at this man. He loves this man. When Jesus looks at a man, not as a man looking at the man, we know that Jesus looks beyond the outward appearance. For it's the church that is the mother of us all. And she is the one who provides for our deepest needs. Which is to know Christ, to be with him, to one day the whole thing to be true. And that power is a 
lesson for us to know that he does this and not only sustains it still, how much power does he have to take care of our material needs and our earthly wants and desires? Can he not also do that? When he provides for us health to work, we give thanks to him for that. To learn from him how to work honestly and justly and truthfully, and therefore we are rewarded for it. We learn this from the church. It is the church that teaches our children that as they grow to know that material things are there, yes, to supply our needs, but they are also there for our reasons, not just for our own personal use and pleasure. We learn that in the church. The power greater than the material world. Through that power must come, ought to come, great trust in our hymn that we just sung. The very first part of the first verse all depends on our possessing God's abundant grace and blessing. Where we are drawn 
into what Jesus wanted this man to be drawn into is what we call a sacramental union. He wanted this man to come to be united with Christ. And where are we united with Christ in the church? We are united with Christ in the church in the Holy Eucharist. There on the altar is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, the true presence of Almighty God. The Lord of the church is there, and he calls us, come, come and eat, come and drink for the forgiveness of your sins. And as Luther goes on, if we have the forgiveness of sins, we have the strengthening of our faith and eternal life. And there it is. And that is what Jesus wanted this man to come into. He wanted this man to come in to have a union with the wealth of Christ. Jesus talks about this in John chapter 6, where he tells the people, do not work for the food that spoils, but work for the food that endures to eternal life. And Jesus said, I will give you. And he gives himself to us here. All that he accomplished in his passion, his death, his resurrection is all here body and the blood of Christ given to his church so that we are drawn into this union with God. But as we come around the altar, it's a beautiful picture. We circle around the altar and Christ is in the center. And Christ is in the center of everything. He's in the center of creation. He's in the center of sustaining this place. He's in the center of our lives. All human life, Christ is centered in giving them life and breath and being. And that is what we have in common with all mankind. And it is the Eucharist that is the food that endures. It will never spoil.
Our neighbor is every human being that has a human face. F-A-C-E. You see a human with a human face? You don't see a lot of them this week, aren't you? Doc, we got a lot of patients. Uh, they all have human faces, right? That is your neighbor. And it transcends what often becomes the evil of racist ideology, the white supremacist ideology, cultural barriers. Transcends that. Our life in Christ transcends all those things. Christ has loved us. He says, now you go, my church, from the altar of the Eucharist, out into the world, serve your neighbor as I serve you. Is it hard? Yes, because all of our lives as American children in school, one of the things that we were taught was rugged individualism. Remember that term? Rugged Individualism. Is that what we teach in the church? I say no, we do not teach rugged individualism in the church. We teach the breaking down of our pride and our selfishness. And we go serve our neighbor with the love of Christ and the material things that we can give to them, knowing that they've all been given to us. This is the church. This is the Eucharist. This is the life of Christ. And this rich man, this is the end of the sad, sad story. He was going to go to the May that not be so with this church. Amen. May that be not so with us. Amen. May we always remember that all depends on who possesses God's abundant grace and mercy to be in the world and the earth in the world. special prayer request this morning the dearly beloved Bernie Zeller <clears throat> she fell in a home last Monday she's been hospitalized since then she has now been transferred to the villagers hospice care for her son and daughter in law my river so we will remember you Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. <clears throat> we praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, from whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us. And enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, save and defend your whole church. Purchase with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and all good works. 
that which is heavenly faith, once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel, both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, strengthen newly established congregations and support them in challenging times. Let them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord. And let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who hate and minister and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us a spirit of love and order our days with your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. Have mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased amongst all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Sanctify our homes with your presence. Bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism. Enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service. They may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow and in sickness or in adversity, especially Denise, Glenn, Stephen, Greg, Joseph, and Rose, Henry's. Leonidas, Ken, Deborah, Tom, and Brenda, Terry, Calvin, Mary, and Alyssa. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all the measure of your love. Taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need. Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Now the elder of the day will be the offerings, please.
study of theory that you should have all mine and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Word. Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, from obedience and to death, even death is on the cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death, given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, with all of you, magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,